Hi guys, Jessie Pellet here, also known as That Minnesota Yarn Girl, and today I'm going to give you an update as to where I am at with, the, with my journey to Master Knitter Level 1. The first thing I have to tell you is that tension is hard. So let me tell you what I mean. So to start with, um, the instructions tell you to work on a preliminary swatch. And so here is my preliminary swatch. And um, this swatch is basically done in th three different size needles. And then you measure the gauge of each one and you determine which needle size you're going to use. And then um, also you evaluate it. Um, you evaluate your swatch just to see, you know, what areas need improvement and um, how your overall tension is and, and all of that sort of stuff. So I noticed when after I had done this, um, luckily the preliminary swatch does not get um, graded, but like I said, it, they do want to see um, how you improve. So I noticed, I had never really noticed this before, but my edge tension is quite off. And um, you look here and you can see that um, the every other stitch on both the, on the edges on both the knit side and the purl side, um, every other stitch is a little bit larger than the stitch before it. And the reason that that happens is because when you knit or purl, um, usually it's when you're purling, you end up purling a little bit looser, especially on the edge, than you had previously knit. And so then that, that stitch just kind of stretches out and becomes a little bit larger. Now, luckily, I think um, my tension was pretty good within the fabric itself, but that those edges, I was just having a really hard time with it. Um, another area that you can see it is if you flip the swatch over and you look at the um, you look at the back side, you can see gutters or gaps in between your and the reverse stockinette side, um, and that's another way to indicate that your tension is a little bit off. So. I spent a lot of time researching and trying to figure out how I could fix my tension. Um, there were, there I found lots of different great articles, um, lots of different great YouTube videos explaining how you could fix it. Um, particularly, like I said, my issue was the edge tension. So um, one way that I found was to... Um, pull your yarn when you're knitting, instead of pulling it over your needle, you pull it under your needle. Um, and then when you're purling, again, you pull it under your needle. And then as you, when you, but then be, your stitch will be twisted. So when you come back the other way, um, you will have to um, knit or purl through the back loop. So to, so as to straighten that stitch out. Um, another thing was to just kind of give it a nice little tug. Um, your you know, particularly your purl stitches, just to kind of, once you pull that yarn back in front, to give it a nice little tug. A lot of things said um, you could just be conscious of the last three stitches in your when you're knitting your row and making them a little bit looser, and then being a little bit tighter with your first three stitches. Um, I tried all kinds of different methods, and <laughs> nothing really seemed to there wasn't really a ton of stuff that really seemed to help. And so it was really quite frustrating because I didn't know how long I needed to practice each method to see some improvement. Um, what I finally did start to do was um, when I do my purl stitches, I just kind of make sure that, especially on those first three purl stitches, I'm just giving it, once I wrap my yarn, I just give it a nice little extra tug. And that seems to be where I've seen the most improvement. I feel like I still need some practice, but that seems to at least been um, the most improvement that I've seen as far as the edge tension. And then also that same issue comes into play when you're doing ribbing because your rib stitches, again, if you're purling too loose, then your rib stitches um, on the one side will end up kind of getting bigger so you're, you'll have, you know, like, so for the first swatch, I have to do um, knit to purl to ribbing. And so the, those, um, the second column of those stitches ends up looking bigger if your tension is off. So I also learned to just kind of give it a little bit, once I 
once I, um, the best method for me seemed to be once I put the yarn over my needle just to kind of give it a nice little extra tug to make sure that those purl stitches um, were nice and tight. So I did finish swatch one. Um, so, and as you can see, these, um, I feel like I've, you know, I had to re, I had to practice this um, ribbing quite a bit, but I finally feel like I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and then the top part of the first swatch is a garter, um, just four and a half inches of the garter stitch. And um, so I feel like I did actually a pretty decent job. I'm pretty happy with this. There's a little bit when I transitioned from the ribbing to the garter. You, oh, and I forgot to mention, you also have to add um, a unobtrusive increases, five unobtrusive increases. And so I did the make one because that was, you know, I did it right after my knit stitches because then it kind of looks like a, the first stitch looks like a knit stitch and then the second one looks like a purl stitch. So it, it just blended right in with my ribbing. Um, but then once I switched to my garter stitch, I feel like I have some of these stitches of my, in my first garter stitch row are a little bit, a little bit larger. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to block out or not, so I'm going to block this and see how it looks. Um, if I'm not completely satisfied with it after it, it's blocked, then I'll have to redo this one. But for now, for the most part, I am finally pretty happy with this first swatch. Um, so. But like I said, I still have to do, that is the only swatch I've done, I still have to do two more swatches. So um, if I want to follow along with my goal or my timeline for this week. So I will have to work on um, my second swatch, which is one by one rib, and then followed by a stockinette. And then the first, and then the third swatch is um, a seed stitch. And I still have to do the research for those as well. Um, but I feel like a lot of the research kind of overlaps, so I don't feel like there'll be as much research to do. And now that I think I'm finally starting to feel better about my tension, hopefully those swatches will go much more smoothly and I'll be able to get those done this weekend. Then I have to work on um, the questions. So again, my goal was to have all of that done already, but I'm a little bit further behind, so I guess I'll have to do some weekend work on um, that in order to stay on track with where I wanted. Um, one other thing I wanted to note in case you saw these little blue, um, this little scrap yarn here that I've inserted in my preliminary swatch. Um, this is, they, this, they um, tell you to put this in there to help you measure your gauge. So you'll put your little scrap yarn in, like one at the bottom, or one at the bottom, one at the top, and then on the two sides, and then that's where your ruler goes in order to measure it out. I loved this technique. I thought it really made it um, a lot easier to pinpoint exactly where your measurement started and stopped, and I think that I'm going to do this method for, um, for finding my gauge in all future swatch swatches because I just thought that made it so much simpler and so so much more clear so I really did think that was great so I loved um, doing that but um, yeah so that is where I am at with my journey this week unfortunately not as far as I had hoped but um, I did learn a lot which is the point and also I am you know working on my tension. Oh, and another thing I did forget to mention is you might wonder why edge tension is so important. Because, and the reason is because if you are going to, like if you have two separate pieces and you want to seam them together, you want that seam from the, from, you know, from the right side to just look perfect and seamless. And that's not going to happen if your edge, sal your salvage, ed you know, um, if you're, tension is off along the selvage. Those, it's gonna look, those stitches will look all wonky. And so that's why it is important to get the tension right. And like I said, now I've learned that I don't have the best edge tension and I am working on improving that. So that's exactly the, my goal for this program. 
All right, that's all I've got for today, but thanks again for joining me. And if you want to follow me on Facebook, Ravelry, and Instagram, you can find me as That MN Yarn Girl. And um, if you want to get notices whenever I post new updates on my journey or on my podcast, feel um, just hit the little bell below. And, and then also, if you like, subscribe and comment that does help my channel to grow. So I thank you so much for again for joining me and I will see you guys again next time. Bye.